Welcome to Pad Shop Fast Approach by Streamworks Audio. I'm your host and instructor, Jeff Quibi. Over the next hour or so, the Streamworks team and I will take you on a guided tour of this remarkable new instrument. Let's get started. Let's start by taking a closer look at granular synthesis. Granular synthesis begins with a sample or a waveform, which is shattered into thousands of tiny grains. Each grain is so small, a few milliseconds, that it's almost inaudible. Then, the grains are reassembled into all kinds of new textures. This is similar to how a piece of sandstone can be reduced to sand grains, then reshaped into almost anything. And once the sound is broken into grains, you can rearrange their order, their length, or even randomize them. Individual grains get their own envelope to help them flow together smoothly into what's called a grain stream. You control how many streams are included in a layer and how often they repeat. The possibilities of granular synthesis are almost endless, but a few tricks include creating pitch sound from an unpitched sample, like a drum sample, Completely scrambling a sample, Or lo fi time stretching. Can anyone stop their mechanical mail? Can anyone stop? Can anyone stop their mechanical mail? Can anyone stop their mechanical mail? So basically, this top section of the instrument is where we'll work the grain structure itself. The other major sections, like the filters, envelope, and amplifier, are used to shape those grains into usable forms. You begin by selecting a sample from the dedicated Pad Shop library. The sample library opens like any other twirl down menu in Cubase. And the samples will load as soon as you select them. This way, you can browse sounds without closing the menu each time. You can also search for samples by entering the name or part of name here, similar to Media Bay. And changing the sample won't affect any other settings in Pad Shop. Once the sample is loaded, the most basic adjustment you can make is the start and stop point. Use these silver handles to pick out what part of the sample will be turned into grains. The very first control on the left is labeled POS. This is the position control. This determines where playback begins. As you move the position control, you'll see the white grain position indicator slew from left to right. Wherever the white line is sitting is where the grains will start out, like this. The random control varies the playback in relation to the position indicator. You won't see any change in the window as you adjust this parameter, but if you set it to 100%, the playback position will jump, randomly, between the start and end of the markers of the sample. Directly below the random control is the offset control. This control changes the start position for the left and right stereo channels. Negative values change the left side, positive values change the right side. The spread control adjusts the spread of the playback position of each grain. For this to have an effect, the number of grains must be greater than one. Notice that if I set the number to one, the spread control is automatically disabled. And more grains mean more dramatic results from the spread control.
The loop function lets the sample restart from the beginning. Here's the sample playback without loop engaged. And here it is again with the loop turned on. The speed control changes how fast and in what direction the grains move through the sample. If I set the speed control to the left, the grains move one way as you play. But if I dial the speed control forward, the grains go the other way. The duration control is one of the most powerful in Pad Shop. This determines how long the grains play. This ranges from one time to a thousand times. With extremely short grains, the duration value itself actually determines what the pitch will be. With longer grains, the pitch will come from the original sample. So this little control can have a big impact on your sound. Right next to duration is the knob labeled key F for key follow. This controls how the duration parameter changes as you play up and down the keyboard. If you set the key follow to 100 and a duration of 1, the grain duration equals the pitch of the notes you play. This random control applies to the duration parameter. In fact, if you look closely, you'll notice that all four of these parameters are grouped on their own red subtab. This is because all four of these apply to the duration parameter. The next subtab has three parameters for grain pitch. The pitch of your sound can come from either the original sample or the frequency of the grain oscillator. The pitch control lets you set the interval between semitones. The pitch random control works in synths. And the pitch spread is effectively a detune control. And like the other spread controls, it requires more than one active grain to work. The length control changes the playback of the grain. At 100%, it's the same as the duration. The length control will not affect the pitch of a sound, so this allows you to adjust the feel of a sound without altering its musicality. The last control in this window is the grain shape control, and it also has a huge impact on the overall sound. These six names all refer to different mathematical functions which are applied to the grains. Some like triangle are fairly common. Other functions or formulas like Gaussian, or Blackman-Harris are more exotic, but all allow you to extract new and different timbers from your basic sample. This last group of parameters affect the overall grain oscillator. If your original sample is particularly loud or soft, the grain level control can help you compensate. And the level random control allows the volume to vary over time. The stereo width control does exactly what its name implies. And the gain control works like a compressor within the grain stream to even out volume changes between grains. Now let's move on to the next chapter and look at some more conventional controls.